So now I'm just going to show you a really quick run through of what using Darktable looks like. Um, there are multiple ways to import files. Um, I prefer to do it manually one at a time. So I'm going to minimize the application and I've cheated and already opened up this window ahead of time. So I have these three images. If you look carefully there, I shoot raw plus JPEG. So right click, open with Darktable. So you'll notice these XMP files were created for each of my files. That's because Darktable is a non-destructive editor. So that means that when I'm adjusting things on this program, I'm not changing the actual file itself. I'm changing variables in a text document. The original file is completely untouched. It's never touched. It's always safe. So anything I do, if I mess something up, it doesn't matter. The three images are loaded in here. Uh, so you might notice that I actually had six images total. Yet in Darktable it only shows three. That's because Darktable has automatic grouping. So if it detects that you have a, that you shot raw plus JPEG, rather than show you both, it just groups them and assumes you want to be working on the raw file. My primary reason for importing this way rather than just doing the massive batch import with this top thing and just pointing it to my photography hard drive and just opening everything. Um, you've got this feature here which is tagging which is a very useful tool and a very easy way to find your files in a hurry. Uh, you know if you shoot Georgian Bay every few years you can just tag all those shots Georgian Bay and then you can bring them all up simultaneously. So it's fantastic for sorting and organizing your files. If I import a quarter million photos, I'm not going to spend a month going through a quarter million photos and individually tagging them. So this way I try to force myself to tag them all as I import them. So you can highlight all of them, you know, click one, hold down shift on the keyboard, click the last one and it'll automatically highlight everything in between. So now for tags, so I'm just going to call this flower in can. And if you double click it here, it'll detach it. If you click it, where did it go? Flower and can. And if you double click it here, it'll add it. So now this image is tagged with flower in a can. So now in the future, I can search for this and these images will come up. You might notice these stars here. Well, this one is pretty horribly underexposed. I'm going to give that two stars. This one right here, let's give this three, and then this one looks close, so I'll give it four. Um, so it gives you ways to organize photos as you're working on it. Now, of course, Darktable is more than just a photo sorting and opening and tagging and organizing software. It's also a developer. So to get to there, you take the image you want to work on and you double click it. All right. So again, down the left-hand side, I've got all the information about this photo. So history stack, think of this as an undo list, color picker, I honestly don't use it much. Uh, tagging, this is incredibly useful, especially the more photos you have, the more useful this becomes. And then here is all your information regarding the image. So you can see the ISO and focus distance and you know all that kind of stuff. Now, down this side are where all your editing modules live. To make things easy for you, the modules are sorted roughly by type or what they're used for. Uh, the first option with the little power symbol there, this is the list of all the active modules. So every single module you're using for this image will be listed here. The, the star, these are your favorites. So any module that you really love, you can put in here. So let's say your shooting style, you typically only end up using four modules. You can just star each of those and then you never have to leave this window. It'll have everything you need. All right, now these are the main ones. First, you have the basic group. So this has the very basic stuff, uh, crop and rotate, exposure, white balance, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, 
This is the, I believe, the tone group. So this all has to do with the exposure and contrast, lightness, darkness. So you've got the classic tone curve zone system, um, local contrast, which is kind of a uh, crazy sharp sharpness thing. Color group, again, this is uh, color correction, color enhancement, making it monotone, all that sort of stuff. Second last one is the correction group. So this will have a lot of things like sharpening, defringing, chromatic aberration, lens correction, uh, spot removal, removing noise, like yeah, hot pixel detection for shooting if, if you shoot at high ISOs often. Uh, spot removal is a very fancy tool and a de deserving of its own video at some point in the future. And the very last category is the effects group. This is where you have things oh, like your, um, if you want to add a watermark, uh, vignetting effect, um, color mapping, which is a quite sophisticated tool that I haven't got yet. Uh, if you want to fake uh, graduated neutral density filters, it's down here. Sorry, not neutral density, you can control the hue. And if you're not happy with these modules, you can click this thing, more modules, and there are a ton. This window is actually a list of every single module that's available, not just the modules for this particular section that you're in. Um, so if you click color balance, even though the effects group is open, it will automatically send that one to the color group. So it, it all sorts itself, you don't have to worry about that. And then you can click there to turn the stars off if you're not happy with that being a favorite. Now that you know where stuff is and all that, um, I find for the most part just kind of work left to right. So start with a simple one and crop and rotate. So notice the crop tool grays out the area that I'm not that's not going to be in the final image. It's a nice little touch that I quite enjoy. Uh, the tool doesn't really take effect until I click on anything else so or go to a different group. So if you want to rotate, now here's one thing. If you click on this and rotate the angle, it's actually a rather coarse control that you have. So here's a little tip for you. If you right click, you get this nifty window. This actually gives you much finer control over rotation. It's a lot easier. Okay, now I just got to adjust the cropping again. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to the tone group. So you've got the basic curves tool. Uh, if you're really picky, you can sort of select the background and okay, that's going to be the 100% white because I want this to be blown out. Uh, that's a bit too much. Make that back. All right, local contrast, make it a little sharper. Sure, default works for me. Different filters, yeah, let's up the saturation. Okay. So now let's uh, sharpen large areas a bit. And just let's do some denoising work. And I'm not going to bother. So now I've got the image the way I want it. Now what do I do with it? Because remember, as I said earlier, this isn't an actual file. Everything you see here are just lines of text in this file right here. So when I want to cook this raw thing into a JPEG, what do I do? Well, I go back to the light table mode. And if you'll notice up in the top corner, it has this little icon has suddenly appeared that isn't present in the other two. That is to indicate that this image has been edited, the other two have not. So click on the image, and if you look on the right hand side towards the bottom you'll have export selected. So you can tell it how you want to save it. You know, you can go direct to Flickr or Google, send it to an email, but I'm just going to do it as a file on a disk because that's what you're going to do 99% of the time. You know, different file options, but JPEG seems to be good enough for everybody else. Quality, um, file size. So this is the maximum file size. And this image is very clearly not a square. So if I set the file size to 800 by 800 and I export, 
what's going to happen? Do you think it'll just deform it into a square? Do you think it'll, I don't know, crop it? Let's find out. So I keep all my exported folders here. Okay, so what has happened? If you look at that, it is 407 by 800 pixels. So when you're setting the resolution, think of this as the maximum resolution. Uh, it will not affect the aspect ratio of your photos. Um, it'll just, whichever of the two dimensions, whether it's vertical or horizontal, whichever one is longer will be 800 or will be whatever you enter in here. The other window will be scaled down accordingly. So you don't have to worry about that. So if you're uploading to a website or something, just set, you can set both to 800 and it'll make them all 800 by something smaller than 800. So you don't have any surprises that way. And that's it. Thank you.